Hi friends, this is Pastor Tom Van Duzer of Our Savior Lutheran Church in Kansas City, Kansas. Join us Saturdays at 5.30 p.m. or Sunday morning, 9 o'clock or 11, 11 a.m. Check us out on the website. Thanks for listening. You know, Jesus loves kids. I've loved, um, <laughs> I've loved all the, uh, uh, the pictures that I've seen of Jesus and children throughout uh, the ages. You know, some of the old ones where uh, uh, a little bit stiff, but uh, you know, yet moms are bringing children to Jesus. And uh, what a joy that is. Uh, this is one that I grew up with. I think it was on my bedroom uh, as I was growing up. Francis Hooks, Jesus and the Children. Maybe some of you remember that. I think Concordia Publishing House printed so many of these and put them in frames. And even newer pictures of Jesus with children uh, around him. You know, whenever there's Jesus and children, it's always a joyful thing. Maybe you remember this picture. Uh, the picture that is on our preschool wall. Uh, just this last week we started preschool with Miss Donna and I love preschool because uh, I get to start the preschool week with chapel. I take my guitar and I start playing when I go down the stairs and uh, the kids know that it's chapel time. Miss Donna says it looks like they're little gerbils that the scurry from their different stations and they go to the uh, to the stage where where they have chapel and there we sing and we hear stories about Jesus and right above them is this beautiful picture of Jesus and the children. There's something special about Jesus with kids. And frankly, there's something special when you see anybody with kids. How they act around the weakest and the most vulnerable of, uh, of, uh, of people. Uh, the, the least sophisticated, the most impressionable, the most joyful people you ever want to see. I told my daughters as they were growing up, you want to see what a young man that you're dating is really like? Watch him with kids. Is he patient? Is he easily angered? Does he you know, get frustrated easily? Uh, will he be a good dad? You know, it's such a joy. And so our gospel lesson for today shows Jesus with children. And turn with me, please, in your Bibles. And always bring your Bibles to church, dear friends. If you don't have your Bible in, uh, with you, always make sure and get your Bible app on your cell phone. Yes, you can look it up because uh, I love to have people get their Bibles out. From Matthew at chapter 18, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is a fascinating verse because it might sound familiar. In just one more chapter in Matthew, this episode comes up. Then people brought Jesus, to, uh, pe children to Jesus and had him place his hands on them and pray for them. The disciples rebuked them. And Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. Hold it, where do I recognize this? For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And when he placed his hands on them, he went on from there. You know, all of a sudden we have Jesus with children. Now this is at the end of his ministry. And he should have been investing in big picture people. You know, the, the big donors who could uh, advance the cause of the gospel. The uh, disciples who were going to go to the ends of the earth. And instead, Jesus is playing with children. He's playing with kids. So we start in Matthew 18. And he called a child to them. I loved our um, gospel video. But you know what? Kids were near. I, I don't see this story as Jesus saying, uh, wait, hold it, somebody go get a child. We'll wait here a half an hour until you get him uh, from in front of the computer screen. No, I think the kids were right there. The kids were right there along with Jesus. There was something about that kids loved to be there and parents wanted their children to be close. There's something about being close. I may say something that makes a little, some of you a little bit uncomfortable, but
But when we have chapel, um, the kids want to get close. They want to get close. I even found this out in um, when I was a uh, pastor in California. We did some gospel uh, lessons like this on video, and I had uh, one mom with four boys. She was sitting in the back, and when it came time for the gospel lesson, the boys would run up front to sit under the screen so they could see real well. I don't know last time I actually read the gospel lesson where p uh, children ran up so they could get closer. Kids know that to be close is special. But we get to be adults and then we sit a little bit farther away. We line the back rows because we don't want to get too close. If you're a teacher, you know the ones sitting in the front want to get it, want to get close. Do you want to be close to Jesus? And he called a little child to them. And there was a child. And he said this. The kingdom of God belongs to such as these. He called a little child. And he wants you and me to be like children. He says, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. What in the world did he mean by that? I've uh, known Robert Fulgham's book, um, Most of What I Need to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten. I did not know that uh, Fulgham originally wrote for the Kansas City Times, and I don't even know when the Times no longer became a newspaper. I didn't know he was a Kansas City guy. But uh, he wrote this article, most of what I really need to know about how to live and what to do and how to be, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain, but there in the sandbox at nursery school. And this is what Fulgham uh, wrote in an article that later became a book. He said, these are the things I learned. Share everything, play fair, don't hit people, put things back where you found them, clean up your own mess, don't take things that aren't yours, say you're sorry when you hurt somebody, and when you go out into the world, watch for traffic, hold hands and stick together. Fulgham has captured the part of what Jesus meant when he said, you need to change and become like children. So what is it about kids? What is it about kids? Um, some would say, well, they're pure. They're just so pure and untainted. Um, you know, they're unsophisticated and they've got it all together. Well, then you haven't taught preschool. Now there. <laughs> if you think the kids have no problems and have no sins and have no selfishnesses and have no... Uh, uh, no faults, you uh, probably haven't raised a toddler either. Now there, kids even sin. You know, one woman said this uh, to me recently, said, I started out to be the coolest mom in the world, and I ended up to be the wicked witch of the kitchen who won't let him eat dirt or put his toys in the toilet. He, I won't let him do anything fun. I'm mean. Well, the Bible says that in sin my mother conceived me, and he ta talks about the sin as an original condition of an inborn inclination to sin. Mary and I had three daughters. We wanted to raise the perfect kids, but you know what? They ended up being little sinners, just like mom and dad. And so that's not what Jesus is getting about. He's not saying become like children and don't sin. I think what he's saying is become like children and have need. Kids need mom and dad. And I think even the hardiest, I can do it myself, kid. Don't help me, I can do it myself. Looks over his shoulder just to make sure that dad's behind and hasn't left. I've noticed when our preschool kids are there, some of the kids who know preschool, um, you know, they're out playing, they're playing in some of the corners and the recesses, but you know, they always have an eye out to make sure that the teacher's there or mom hasn't left yet. And even as kids get older, what dad isn't delighted when his son calls, uh, you know, years after he's left and said, Dad, how do you get that rusty bolt out again? Can you tell me? Jesus wants us to know that we need him. That's why he said, therefore, whoever takes a lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Do you need Jesus? You need Jesus like a child needs mom and dad. You may wander, but only so far. 
See, the good news, my friends, is that, is that we have a need and God has a solution. That I need God and he wants to have me as his child. Not only does the cross of Jesus forgive us, but God desires for us to need him in so many ways. Forgiveness of sins, life eternal, um, full and joyful life now. Fellowship with God's people. All of these, my friends, God desires to provide. And he says, do you need them? Do I need them? It's a great old hymn. It says, I need thee every hour, O gracious Lord. No tender voice like mine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, hear me, blessed Savior, I come to thee. A child knows that he has need. And yes, there's time when he says, well, I want to do it myself. But still he needs mom and dad. I've always loved this verse in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace you save through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's the gift of God, not by works so that no one can, no one can boast. There's no boasting, only need. No striving, only grace. No earning, only faith. And so God calls on me. Will you be a child? Will you be like a child? It's one of the reasons, and I know we don't have a lot of kids here now, but we put a lot of effort in children. And a lot of children have moved out to Johnson County and out in the suburbs. Not so many here as there were years ago. But still, we have effort and energy in children's ministry, dear friends, because children are important. And they will continue to be important at our Savior. But Jesus gave a warning. Maybe you caught that. Uh, he talked a little bit about millstones. And on verse 6, he goes on and says, And uh, anyone causes one of these little ones who believes in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Millstones. As a matter of fact, Jane Wetzel said, uh, you and Lou have... Uh, you guys have a millstone on your front porch. We're thinking of going and getting it, but it was a little bit heavy. Actually, it was a lot heavy. I don't want a bad back for a picnic. No, there. Millstones are heavy, and when you've got a millstone around your neck, man, you aren't getting off the uh, seafloor anytime soon. Now, a couple things about this verse. First of all, Jesus says, if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, isn't it amazing? He says, children can believe. They may have an unsophisticated faith, but faith it still is. When they sing, Jesus loves me. I still remember a time when Mary and I, uh, as we were dating at Concordia, uh, at that time Concordia College in Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, we were both involved in the band, and the band had a, um, had a trip. Uh, took a tour to various churches and schools. And one place we stopped was Bethesda Lutheran Home in Watertown, Wisconsin. It's a large residence for adult mentally handicapped. Uh, and at that, that time, that central campus had a large mentally handicapped community. We played a concert for a gym full of adult mentally handicapped people. And it was interesting, a lot of hooting and hollering and uh, just things that happen when there are adult mentally handicapped people there. At halftime, though, uh, as the band took a break, we got out a couple of guitars and a few students came and we sang some songs that they could sing. And the director said, please sing our theme song. It's Jesus loves me, this I know. And these people sang with us. It's still an event that uh, humbles me. And I think what a simple faith each of these may have. You know, I think of my faith, you know, how I know that Jesus lived 2,000 years ago. And I understand that he only lived to be 33 years of age, that he had 12 disciples, and that he taught diligently. He really didn't go very far from his home, I understand. And I understand the languages he spoke, Aramaic and Greek. And, um, and I understand just what it must have been for him to go to the cross, although I've never done that, so I guess I don't understand. 
And then I understand what it was like to be both God and man. No, as a matter of fact, I have no clue what that means. I have no clue what it means to be the creator of the universe, to be one with the Father and the Spirit, yet to come to earth and become a child and have to go through potty training and teething and, and go through, well, what it means to be human. I have no idea what that means. And so maybe my faith isn't all that sophisticated. God calls on us, my friends, to have faith like a child. And remember also that children can believe. And so when God grants faith in baptism, in early training, what a joy that is. But Jesus also gives a warning. He says uh, to parents and to grandparents, if you're interested in something eternal, take this warning. If anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. The souls of your kids, God takes seriously. And for parents who say, well, I'll let my kids decide. I wonder, have you decided? Is Jesus yours? If you say, well, it's only church, they have... They have sports, they have homework to do. What value do you place in Jesus? For those parents who say, well, let's not go overboard on this church thing. They have little passion for Jesus themselves. But Jesus has passion for you, my friends. And he calls on you with grace and says, come, be my child. And I encourage parents to be children in the way that you raise your children and grandparents to have a simple and joyful faith because kids catch that. I'm going to say a mini amen because we're talking about judgment here and um, we're going to have a second mini sermon and I'm just going to read this. Um, Pastor Keith Haney was kind to us when he so tactfully stated something that many of us wondered about. He said, and just to get the elephant out of the room in this situation, the comments about whether our Savior is ready for a black pastor played no role in this decision. And I thank him for his kind words. Now our first lesson for today said this, when I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will surely die and you do not speak out and dissuade them from their ways, that person will die for their sin and I will hold you accountable for their blood. That's from Ezekiel 33. At the meetings uh, spoken of, the specter of racism at Our Savior was raised. Pastor Keith handled the situation very well. Several, several other members spoke eloquently regarding the desire of our congregation to have people of all races fully involved in ministry at Our Savior, including as pastor. At the time, I felt their words were sufficient, but I was wrong. As pastor, part of my charge is to publicly declare who we are and what we stand for. I did not do that on that day, and I apologize to you for that. The job of the watchman is not to listen to hear if anyone else has sounded the alarm, but to blow the trumpet himself. I'm thankful that I have a Savior who loves and cares for me too. The grace of God to pastors is great. James says in James 3 that not many should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Now he does not say whether that judgment is by God or by people, maybe it's both. But I'm thankful that God is a God of grace and I, a sinner, am saved through the blood of Jesus Christ and not the quality of my ministry. And I pray your blessings on our Savior. Uh, I pray that God would bless our Savior, that God would bless my leadership of us, and upon our teamwork together, and that God still has a pastor waiting for us. Let's pray about all this. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for calling us to become children. We ask your blessings upon us as we open and soften our hearts and come with a simple childlike faith. Help us, Heavenly Father, as we grow up in that faith. And all God's people said, Amen. Dear friends, let's rise before the picnic where well, we have Bible study still. But uh, hymn number 728 is our closing hymn.